being my brother's keeper. Everyone back right. I didn't hardly sleep that night. Prayer. I know. I know what was going to happen to him. It just felt like it was forever. Davenport University's football program is in its infancy. The Panthers just completed their fourth season under longtime West Michigan coach Sparky McEwen. I always preach to them when that clock hits four zeros, it's over. It's over. It's back to the real world and the, the, the world of life. And, and, and life happens. On a Sunday night last November, life in its most challenging way happened for this family. We, it was the end of the season, so we had a little banged up injury, so we were switching, switching places. With the car empty on gas, three players decided to push it to a nearby gas station just a short distance down the road. At the same time, about 100 men were inside a closed Railtown brewery in Dutton. And we asked that you would encourage us here, Father, you challenge us to be great. A meeting for Christian Fellowship that was supposed to happen the following week. It's a place where men gather to share stories of grace and redemption. Malik's right here beside me, just like Coach Sparky is. Security cameras from just outside the brewery show what happened next. And out of nowhere, car just come fly, smash Malik. I went to the front uh, to get to get Malik. I didn't know what was going to happen to him. It just felt like it was forever, and uh, it was just that was a, that was the toughest time because like, you don't never, you don't know what's going to happen at that point in time. All I really see is my friend with his bones out and blood everywhere. As fast as the accident happened is as fast as Randy Butte, Steve Heisinga, and Shane Kimball were already outside. And I kind of ran out there and looked and saw a body there and I jumped the fence and Shane and Randy were already there. Randy was supporting his head and talking to him. I was trying to keep him calm. And then Steve run, runs out and we had to find something to you know, tourniquet his leg. He was bleeding from his legs and uh, losing quite a bit of blood there. So. Steve pulls off his belt, we lift his leg, and Steve pulls it as tight as he can. There, there was just a, a small tinge of helplessness when he was loaded into the ambulance and, and we're no longer helping him. At that point when you have to let him go and trust that everything is going to work out the, the way that God wanted it to work out. Coach McEwen lives close to where the accident happened. Someone within the group knew the players and called him immediately. And what I witnessed, at that scene, you just knew it was it. After emergency surgeries, the fighter all knew Malik Hayes to be started to get his memory back a few days later. Sometimes I, I try to, to not think about it at all, but uh, sometimes again I get sad thinking about it. Malik's mom, Marion, lived in Louisiana at the time. Please keep the prayers coming. Um, we really, really need your prayers. She made it to Grand Rapids the next day to see her son. With the extent of his injuries, they explained to me in detail that um, it's, it was, it's a long recovery ahead. Malik had broken bones and major structural damage to both legs. I think from Malik, being that football player, that active guy um, is very helpful. Malik's 6'5", 260 pound body certainly is helpful but his relentless attitude dwarfs his frame. I just dig deep down to me and just uh, think about the future again, you know, and just keep putting through it, just work, get hard every day in therapy and just trying to get better. Almost three months to the day, Malik, who was transferred to Mary Freebed, took his first steps. Uh, feels pretty good to uh, be able to progress every day and it feels really good to walk again. I see him put weight on his legs and walk. It's like God, a miracle. I, I teared up when I saw it because it is a miracle. It made me like feel like you know, God got a plan for everybody. Sometimes there's stuff that happens outside of medicine we can't describe and why in this situation he was able to keep both legs. Or why the base camp fellowship group happened to move its meeting date up a week. If, if those guys weren't there, um, Malik would have, he, he would have passed. Yeah, you truly believe there was, um, God's hand was in this. And seeing him laying there on the ground, I thought, man, I hope he lives. Let alone putting the tourniquet on his legs and feeling what, it, 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 there wasn't a lot there when I wrapped it around his legs and I thought there's no way. That's also what you may think of Malik's chances to play football again, but it's part of what drives him every step he takes. I'm always 
fight through no matter what the outcome will be. I just, I, you know, I just always been a hard worker at everything I do, so that's just me, so I, I just keep fighting through and putting through. You will never play football again, right? Who says? What I saw? Who says that?